Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. 12 arrested in suspected human trafficking ring in Manchester. UK Privy Council rules that attorneys reporting clients' breaches of poker does not infringe on right to privacy. And later in sports, Wendy's women win a final warm-up match ahead of World Cup. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. We begin with the news that the police are investigating what is suspected to be a major human trafficking ring operating in Mandeville, Manchester. This follows an operation this morning in which 15 foreign nationals, including a child, were detained in Bavini Heights. The pre-dawn operation was carried out by the Counter-Terrorism and Organized Crime Unit and officers attached to the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency. The detainees are said to be of Indian descent. Now, hours later, in a second operation at Rosedale in the parish, eight persons were taken into custody, including two men wanted for murder in Clarendon. The UK-based Privy Council has ruled that the requirement for attorneys to report breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act, POCA, does not infringe on the right to privacy protected by the Constitution. The ruling was handed down this morning. The Jamaican Bar Association had sought to exert a legal professional privilege to keep confidential all dealings with and information about clients derived by the attorney in the course of engagement. Hal Shane Burke reports. As the government stepped up efforts to combat money laundering, attorneys were being included in the requirement to share information on the acquisition and disposal of real estate or business and the creation of trusts to comply with international obligations in respect of money laundering and the financing of terrorist activities. This in turn granted the General Legal Counsel the authority to ensure compliance with the requirement which would include examining documents and sharing such information with the relevant authorities. The Bar Association had challenged the regime, however this was dismissed by the Supreme Court. The Association then took the matter to the Court of Appeal, which ruled that aspects of the requirement contravened the right to privacy and freedom from search of property without valid justification. The government then took the matter to the Privy Council for a ruling on the constitutionality of the new regime. The UK-based law lords in the judgment handed down this morning say attorney-client confidence is no answer to the obligation to allow inspection of relevant documents or to answer questions in civil litigation. They added that the General Legal Council does not have the power of search and seizure, noting that in the event that the Council believes an attorney is not compliant, it will consider whether to take disciplinary action or make a report to the relevant authority. The Privy Council therefore held that the regime's infringement of rights of privacy has been demonstrably justified and does not breach the constitutional rights of attorneys or their clients. Hal Shaneberg reporting for TVJ News. Meanwhile, the government says that the ruling by the Privy Council is a game changer for the country's financial system. Cody and Barrett has that angle. It's a major win. That's how Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark described this morning's ruling by the UK-based Privy Council in relation to attorneys reporting breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act. The Privy Council was unanimous in their verdict that, and I quote, the regime does not breach attorneys or their clients' constitutional rights. It follows that the order of the full court, that is the Supreme Court, should be restored. As such, the decision is a game changer in Jamaica's efforts to ensure that the financial system is not abused to launder the proceeds of criminal activity. In that light, he says the government will be moving with alacrity to ensure that attorneys adhere to the requirements under POCA in preventing the abuse of the country's financial system, especially in terms of money laundering. With the matter of attorneys being under the framework now settled, Jamaica would have satisfied the international standards of bringing all designated non-financial businesses and professions under Jamaica's anti-money laundering framework. This decision enables the General Legal Council to resume its role of monitoring compliance by attorneys and as the first step with support from Jamaica's AML Prime Contact Secretariat at the Bank of Jamaica to resensitize attorneys, particularly with regard to the suspicious transaction reporting regime. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. 
The defense team for Constable Noel Maitland has indicated that it intends to renew his bail application on June 12. Constable Maitland, who is charged with the murder of social media personality Donnelly Donaldson, was last last October denied bail. Now, 24-year-old Donaldson was reported missing on July 13, two days after she was last seen at Maitland's apartment in St. Andrew. Constable Maitland was arrested on July 27 in connection with the disappearance of Miss Donaldson. Maitland is also charged with preventing the lawful burial of a corpse. The cop confessed that before she went missing, he had an argument with Miss Donaldson over a photograph of the mother of his child that was on display at his apartment. Miss Donaldson's body has not been found. Despite hiccups with the new Road Traffic Act, the National Security Minister, Dr. Horace Chang, is defending the new ticketing system in general, saying it will create an effective public order system. Kodian Barrett reports. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Jang explained that under the previous ticketing law, technique used when tickets were being issued by law enforcement was confrontational and needed to be improved. You know, currently, vending on the street side, if you want to, inter to deal with a vendor in the wrong place, the police have to take the goods that make it contentious, a fight, a quarrel. If you make, if they're making loud noise with that, the host or the commercial is near to a residential area, if you want to stop them, you have to take the equipment, which gets you in a lot of argument again, and if, if equipment is damaged, Okay, and it, it becomes a scene of an oppressive action and a fight with the public and the little man, proverbial small man. He says the hope is for the new ticketing system to form the backbone of an effective broad ticketing measure. The issue is to create a system that when we can issue a ticket, we can hold it accountable. So if you go to the house and he's playing his music loud, you issue a ticket, he will get the warrant if he don't pay the ticket. And you can issue a ticket for $100,000. Madame host party don't necessarily want to have that and he knows that if it is repeats you will carry him to court and the judge can then see the equipment legally and charge him the right amount of money. But he added that no more pardons will be made moving forward for outstanding tickets. It's a million tickets we forgive for pre-2018. There's a whole hope. The space that the traffic court is occupied by piles and piles of tickets and warrants that never moved. And, uh, you know, last year we issued 720,000 tickets. Current one, you get a ticket, you can pay it on your telephone, you can pay the internet. But if it's not paid, we have an assurance that a warrant will be printed at the court's office on the 30th day. And therefore, it will be delivered. He was speaking at a meeting with business sector leaders on Wednesday. Cody Ann Barrett, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. Much more stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Residents of St. Thomas got an opportunity to have their voices heard during a recent town hall meeting in the parish. The National Water Commission, NWC, and the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, took major blows from the residents. Cody and Barrett reports. St. Thomas has been in the news repeatedly because of one major issue, no water. So when a town hall meeting was held Tuesday night with stakeholders, residents did not pull punches in expressing their grouses. My phone rings like a hundred times for the day, and it has to do with National Water Commission. The poor citizens of Stanton Housing Scheme, ladies and gentlemen. I went up to Stanton and I almost cried when I saw what was happening there. Spring Garden, Mount Stewart, Thornton, Need and Penn. I understand that something has been done. You have a lot of PR stunt. People come and talk. In response, Assistant Vice President of NWC, Philippa Gamble Francis, sought to highlight what works have been done. The pipelines are being sourced to take new lines from up to the Stanton tank. I think it's a, it's a very large tank that we have up there. And the plan is to stop the top of Stanton housing scheme. And the plan is to rehabilitate the tank and do new pipelines. And we have those works. And for the issue of garbage collection, Mayor of Morantibay Hubert Williams questioned the distribution of the new garbage trucks. 
need to look at the people of St. Thomas yeah. and tell the people that we haven't received none of the trucks. St. Thomas did not receive any trucks. It's very important. Don't, don't talk about five and the contractors. We asked a specific question. How much truck St. Thomas did receive? Just be honest and say none. We got 10 additional units. Where we have used the units traditionally is we put the trucks in areas where we have the most backlog or problems with garbage. Currently, St. Thomas, as I've just said, has zero load of, of garbage. We are on schedule. So places where we're having the challenges where we put the trucks. When we see when we see garbage problems coming on the horizon, what we call backlog, then we dispatch the trucks to those areas. So it would not be, be practical to send additional trucks to St. Thomas when we don't have any, any backlog problems. And with St. Thomas still badly affected by ongoing roadworks, residents were offended that no representation from the National Works Agency was present. I am sure that National Works Agency was invited this evening. Yes. And it's a disrespect to the citizens of St. Thomas that National Works Agency is not present here today. And next time you worship, we, you need to invite China Harbor and National Works Agency because they have some explaining to do to us in St. Thomas about the road condition. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. And it's now time for the Business Minute. In the world of business, Link is making access to its digital wallet easier with a new sign-up experience that offers tiered accounts to match the needs of customers. The digital wallet's new Tier 1 account, Link Lite, will allow customers to register with just their TRN. All new users will be automatically enrolled in the Tier 1 account with access to the app's main features, top-up, bill payments, link transfers, and IABM cash in and out, and a $40,000 daily transaction limit. Wigton Wind Farm Limited has agreed to purchase land in Ferry Pen, St. Andrew for $240 million Jamaican dollars. Although the renewable energy company did not disclose plans for its use, Wigton Wind Farm's managing director, Erlington Barrett, says the company is continuing to work assiduously on diversifying its business. In global business, Asia will, for the first time, use half of the world's electricity by 2025. According to a new forecast by the International Energy Agency, IEA, much of Asia's electricity use will be in China, a nation of 1.4 billion people whose share of global consumption will rise from a quarter in 2015 to a third by the middle of this decade. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, for the second time this week, another earthquake was recorded near Dominica, this time with a magnitude of 3.6. According to UWI Seismic Research Center, the quake struck sections of Dominica, Guadeloupe and Martinique. On Tuesday, a magnitude 3.7 earthquake was recorded northeast of Dominica. There was also a tremor on Wednesday with a magnitude of 3.5, which was recorded near Guadeloupe. On the international scene, the Biden administration is planning to roll out a roadmap as early as Thursday on what it will mean for the country when the COVID-19 public health emergency comes to an end later this year. The administration is expected to provide more details around the ending of the public health emergency declaration. The White House announced last week that President Joe Biden intends to end the COVID-19 national and public health emergencies on May 11, a decision that signals that the administration believes the COVID-19 pandemic is now squarely in a different stage than it has been over the past few years. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Carrie Ann Simpson. Thanks, Karen. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Fort will have your midday sports report.